Hi everybody! Welcome back to another edition of Cabin Crafts. My name is Candy and today we're kind of doing a little infomercial. Um, this is Springerly Molds and I don't know if any of you all have ever heard of Springerly before but it is a specific type of cookie. Um, again another German thing. Um, I have a lot of German things in my store actually I guess because I have a lot of German. But anyway um, these are beautiful cookie molds. They would have hand carved these. I don't know if you can see this one very well. This is a bird. But um, this is a company, a Missouri company. The lady that owns it goes to Europe and she gets antique hand carved cookie molds. These would have been done with what's called chip carving and they would have been made in wood. And then she makes a resin cast of each antique mold and they make Springerly cookies. So for those of you who don't know what a Springerly cookie is, it is um, a cookie that is flavored with anise. So it's kind of got a licorice taste. It's also going to be like biscotti. It's very hard. It's a dunking cookie. And the reason being is you would um, get your make your cookie dough and then you would stamp your design on the cookie dough and cut out with either a knife around the design or with a, if you had a round cutter, you could just cut it with a round cutter and you put it on a baking sheet, like on some parchment paper, and you leave it out to dry for 24 hours. So what's going to happen is the top of that cookie is going to be very dry. And so when you bake it, it retains this beautiful imprint. It doesn't spread and, and get all goopy looking. But the lady that owns the company sent me an example of Springerly cookies. These are real Springerly cookies. I don't know if you can see this or not, but very detailed in the cookie. In the UK, this would be a biscuit. So very, very detailed. Um, they turn out beautifully. And so what? when I was... Uh, a school cook down in the little part of Perry County where I live. I cooked at uh, Altenburg Public School. And so as you can imagine with a name like Altenburg, all of the kids, grandmothers, had these kind of molds or maybe even a rolling pin that's all carved in. I'm sure you've seen those. Those are probably more popular than individual um, cookie molds. Some cookie boards would be like this big. I think on uh, Ron and Justine's Early American Channel, Last Christmas, they made two big, giant gingerbread cookies out of cookie boards. Same thing, same process. Um, so anyway, these are uh, all the different ones that I sell. Um, and then here's the actual cookies that they make. And Martha Stewart Living Magazine, for years, would have these on the cover of her magazine, this exact company's molds. She liked to make cookies with their molds every Christmas. And she also would make um, Christmas ornaments with them. So she would get, we, we could go back to our little tub of air dried clay that we've made in some of our other craft videos. You could smush it onto your mold, let it dry, and you'd have an ornament and you could paint it. And you know, it's from your cookie molds. So she did that in one of her editions. Um, these are all individually priced, individually um, different, and they come with a recipe book so you get a recipe book and it's got actually several different recipes inside it's got like um, let me open it out so you can see we have gingerbread we have the Springerly cookies there's the Springerly recipe shortbread um, Speculos. Remember the windmill cookies we ate as kids with the little almonds on them, the spicy windmill cookies? I love those. Um, here is uh, Frankfurter Brenton. This is an almond cookie. And then, of course, we have edible chocolate modeling clay. So you could actually make like a chocolate fondant. And um, one of the other things that I've seen done with these uh, beautiful molds is you could press it into fondant and then lay that over the top of a cupcake. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. I've got bunny rabbits. I've got flowers and birds. There's an owl, a strutting rooster, a pine cone down here is all of our Christmas ones. There's big bell snickles. Remember our bell snickle 
episode. Here's a big buck. He's beautiful. It's deer season here in Missouri. This would make a great cookie for a deer hunter. Um, there's a snowman, a Christmas tree. Here's a little angel. This is one of my favorites. This is the coolest little mold. This is a walnut mold. And here you have the meat. And here you have the shell. And I've seen cookies made with this shell. They'll take two of the shell pieces and sandwich it between some sort of cream filling. And they're beautiful. They look like little, real little nuts. And then they'll have the little nut meat cookies scattered on a tray with the actual nuts. And it's really, really pretty. So this is a little walnut mold. He's beautiful. And um, these are all on the website. Uh, they will go fast. They're... Um, not real cheap, so I'm, I'm going to give you a heads up, because they are made in America. The company is in Missouri, but they're made in Kentucky, and they're made from antique hand-carved molds. So they're not, you know, going to be five, six dollars. I think, I think this one is going to be, he's going to be almost fifty dollars for the walnut mold. But they are on my website. They will last forever. They're uh, made out of a wood resin. They're beautiful. Some of them you can even still see the wood grain in it from the carving. And so they're on the website, www.scoshop, and that's spelled S-H-O-P-P-E, dot com. And they will come with the little recipe booklet. And um, just, just another little story about Altenburg where I cooked lunch. Every Christmas, the fourth grade class would bring in their grandmother's rolling pins and molds, and they would, after we got done cooking lunch um, and everything was all cleaned up, then the fourth grade class would come in with their molds, make the Springerly cookies, and they would be left out on the counters to dry. And then they would come back the next day after lunch and bake them. And what's cool is they raise from the bottom. So that top has been dried and they raise from the bottom like a macaron. So it's a really beautiful little cookie. And then they would, they would make them in early November because they're going to put them in like a, a Rubbermaid plastic container and seal them up because the longer they sit, they like age and they taste better. And so then they would take them to the seniors and the shut-ins in our community as Christmas gifts. And I thought that was always so sweet. So a um, little bit of personal history about the Springerly molds in my area. So um, anyway, if you would like to order one, they are on the website. I only keep about three of them of each design in at a time because... They're expensive wholesale, and so I can't always place a great big order. So anyway, there's a fleur de lis, there's grapes, there's a little bee, there's the bunny rabbits, um, there's a turkey, there's a Christmas donkey. Here is the uh, Holy Family, a creche scene. Um, I love the six-pointed star. They're just all pretty, and there's, there's so many of them. I wish I could get one of every kind she makes, but there's like 300 different molds. So anyway, it's, it's um, a lot. But if you want to um, look at the molds they have, and I can order you one, it's uh, houseonthehill.net. Now, you can't order those retail. They only sell wholesale, so I would have to get it for you. But if you want to go to houseonthehill.net and look at all the different designs they have and let me know, then I can order you one um, special. They even have, like, uh, the 12 Days of Christmas, and then they have, have last initials or initials. So, like, if you were having a, a wedding shower, you could put the fondant in somebody's initial on a bunch of cupcakes and that would be really pretty. So anyway, that's my infomercial about Springerly molds. Thank you for watching.